Today on MH News, we're choosing film locations. We don't have to chase this dream alone. Welcome to MH News, everybody. I'm your host, Matt Haslam. Now, your location can be the vital piece to your film or your video, and many people don't know it can be vital, but you can have the best crew in the world, the best cameras in the world, but a mediocre location and your entire film can suffer as a result of it. Um, so the perfect location is vital. So here's how to do it. The first step in finding a location is knowing what are the locations are available. Know your local area. If you just moved in or something like that, ask around and ask the Visitors Bureau or uh, a couple business owners in the area for different areas they know. Um, maybe a great way to do it is ask a local barber. Um, they know a lot of stuff um, that goes on, so just ask them what's interesting in the area to check out. And you don't necessarily need a script yet at this point. Just find out what's interesting to look at around your area. Because your local area is going to be the cheapest place to go to actually get to. So um, rather than traveling an hour or two away, you can just travel right down the road. So know your local area. Go to your state film board website or visitors bureau to find out some interesting locations and maybe ask a friend. Don't write a script and then try to find locations, but rather write a script to fit your resources. For instance, you wouldn't write a, want to write into your script an aerial shot if you don't have access to a helicopter or, at the very least, a quadcopter drone or something like that. Um, so you don't want to write that into your script and then not have something to actually do that shot with. Um, just like with locations, you don't want to write into a script that you have this big horror scene if you don't have a house or a abandoned road to go to to find that location. But in the end, you're probably going to write your script to fit the resources you have. Um, don't just settle on one location, though. Scout out many locations before coming to an agreement on one. Um, generally, what happens is you choose a fil film, like a maybe a cluster of 20, narrow it down to maybe five, and then you go out actually scouting out those, lo those locations in person. Um, have a location scout or maybe even yourself. Go out there, take lots of notes, take lots of still pictures, and you want to record where each of those pictures were taken. For instance, on our music video for Haunted, we actually ended up using three different forests for that. Um, you don't need to, need to actually just settle on one location because in the end, that might be too big of a location. For instance, we wanted to make it look like a big giant forest I was in, but we didn't actually, we had big forests, but we didn't actually have the resources to go into the forest that much. We knew we'd have to be traveling into the forest with tons of gear. So in the end, we chose three smaller locations and filmed them in different ways to cut them all together and make it look like one giant forest. And sometimes that's what you have to do. Um, the perfect location might be great, but if you don't have the resources to back it up, then you might have to choose a lesser perfect location in the end. But what I did on that one is I went out in person and I scouted out each location, maybe five of them, and I took lots of pictures, chose some really interesting uh, places in those forests, for instance, a little bunker I found, and I took lots of pictures of different things from different angles, and I wrote down a little tiny map where each of those locations were in that location that I was scouting out that day, and then what I did is I filled out a form to relay to the director. Normally, you would do this. Um, for me, I was my own director on that product, so I didn't need to do it, but there's a form at the end of this video that we're going to show you uh, that generally is how you fill out a form for location scouting. Um, that gives you all the resources. Take lots of notes again. Um, for instance, are you nearby a restaurant so your crew can get lunch that day? Are you nearby um, electricity so you can get power for your lights and your camera gear and stuff like that? Um, and a lot of people don't think out all the way here and think about the mere necessities of life here, but um, are you nearby some sort of restrooms that you can actually use for your crew and yourself that day? Um, if you're going to be there for a couple days, are you lo nearby a hotel or something like that? Um, basically, a lot of times what will happen is the perfect location might be great, but it's just too far away from any of these main resources of life to actually support it. So a lot of times you have to go to a lesser perfect location to make the resources uh, available to yourself. Um, otherwise, you have to bring in uh, porta potties, or you have to bring in generators, 
or all that kind of stuff or catering which all cost the producer more money and if your producer doesn't have the money and budget for it um, you can just choose a lesser perfect location to fit that next you want to approach the landowner and have a number in mind whether you basically if you're gonna do this as a student project if you don't want to pay then have that number in mind if you um, want to if you're doing it for profit, then have a number in mind what you'd be willing to pay. Um, if it's like a 30 second clip of the end two hour long film, you might not want to budget that much money on that location. Um, so have a number in mind and maybe tell them about your project. Um, definitely tell them about your project here. How long will you need to use the property for, for instance? A lot of times people think, well, uh, if you say to them, well, it's only going to be a 30 second clip at the end final cut, they might think, well, it might only take you an hour to shoot this, you know? In the end, it might take you eight hours a full day to shoot it because you need lots of different angles or some of that that are all going to end up being cut together. 30 seconds in an end film might take all day to do. It might take two, three days to do. Um, all depends on how big of a setup you have. So make sure you explain to them how long you're going to actually need the location for. Um, otherwise, you're just leading them on and they might think uh, something of it they might think um, it's really easy and a 30 second clip will only take a minute to do so you'll be in and out you know it's not going to um, but come up with the first price in your mind that you'll be willing to pay and maybe even offer them an advertisement as trade for use of the location um, you're going to need establishing shots anyway so if it's like a local business or some of that then you want to maybe approach them and say you know Maybe we can have an establishing shot and shoot a scene where our actors are coming into the, walking into your restaurant or something like that. Um, you're going to end up needing, needing an establishing shot anyway to tell your audience where you're at. So offering them a little ad of their banner or their sign outside being in your shot, you know, in the end, you need that shot anyway. So um, you're really offering them something as compensation that you're going to need anyway. So it's a win-win on both sides. You're going to need it anyway, and it's an ad for them, so it's good for their business. So maybe offer that as co some compensation if you can't pay real money to get the location, or even if you can, maybe you can approach them that way and get the price down a little bit and save your producer some money. Remember, the smaller the business is, the less money they'll actually want to use. So... Um, use small restaurants. Don't go to some place like McDonald's or um, Ruby Tuesdays or a national chain restaurant or something like that. Don't go there because um, you're just going to get to run around and you're going to have to go through corporate and uh, basically they're going to need to be on set with you. What, a representative is going to need to be on set with you constantly to make sure everything's perfectly fine and they're going to need to see the final cut of the video before you take it out there and mainstream broadcast it um, because they want to know their reputation is still going to be withheld. The only time that you're allowed to really film a national train restaurant without their permission is if they approach you to do it. Um, for instance, a little while back, White Castle National Restaurant Chain asked me to film their next commercial and uh, ended up I didn't need really that many. I didn't need to really ask them for the rights to film their location because they asked me to film it. Um, so that's the only time you can do that. But generally, the smaller the business is, the less money they'll want as compensation and the less legal issues you'll run into. Um, remember, if you're not renting the location, you can't make people move out of the way for your shot. So if you're just on a normal street or something like that, and if you don't have it rented out and blocked off for the day, you can't tell people to stop driving on it. Um, for instance, if you're at a state park, some of that, you can't tell people to stop walking through the state park if you haven't rented it out and you don't have barricades up. There's no way for you to shut down the location if you didn't actually rent it out and have that in your contract that you're going to do that. Um, so remember that. A lot of times you want the perfect shot, but people get in the way. So keep that in mind. You don't you don't want to make a scene either. Um, if you're not paying for a location, you don't want to show up with a shakes load of gear, um, box trucks full of it. Um, generally, that's going to give you away. Um, or even a couple cameras on a camera crew. You don't want to show up with a bunch of camera crew or even like two cameras or some of that because that's going to give you away. You're professional. Um, and a lot of times you're going to have to pay for the location. So it's much more 
advisable to just shoot with one camera and then shoot it again from another angle if you have to, if you can't pay for the location. Um, but always keep in mind if it's private ground, uh, you can't shoot there anyway. If it's public ground, then show up with one camera, shoot it from two different angles, and uh, you can always make an excuse up. But um, generally, if you show up with a bunch of gear, you're going to need to get the rights to use all that gear. Do your research. The more you know, the easier the project will be in the end, and the more time you'll actually save. So the more time you spend in researching locations, scouting them out, knowing what's there, um, knowing if you need porta potties, generators, all that kind of stuff, is all going to save you time and money later. And remember, time is money as well. So um, the more you know about a location, the better. That way, the more things you can predict. And the more things you can predict, the easier it will be on set that day when you finally get to production. So keep all that in mind. Make sure you know your crap. If you have a crew, if, even if you don't have a crew, make sure you know your stuff. Even when I was doing the music video Haunted, one of the days I was actually doing it by myself, so I had to know the location in and out so I can actually get the shots I needed and get the heck out of there um, because I had a schedule and I had a lot of shots I needed, so I needed to know that location inside and out. But if you have any tips on how to find locations or choosing film locations, please comment below and share with others. Thanks for joining us here today and see us back here every Monday through Thursday for brand new episodes. And if you have any questions on uh, choosing film locations, email us at questions at mhnews.info. Thanks for joining us and have a good one. This first form is to be completed by your location scout, production assistant, or whoever actually visits the locations in person, sometimes months before the production begins and crew arrives on set. We're going to zoom in here in a second to show you these forms a little more clearly, so feel free to pause this video and copy down any of what you see. This, along with the following two forms, are standard forms we found online to help filmmakers for small or medium-sized projects, which may or may not make a profit. This location form is completed by filling out what resources the location has and what resources it requires the crew to bring with them on the day of the production. Normally, this form is completed and accompanies pictures and a map of the location and is given to the producer and director who choose the best locations for the project. Feel free to add anything you'd like to fit your production needs. This second form is a standard contract between a production company and the landowner, explaining what the project will be about, and explaining the cast and crew have the right to be on this location, which may be private or publicly owned, for certain time periods. If your location is outdoors, or in a section of the world which gets a lot of snow, and it's coming up on winter season, we suggest you set in place a rain date on this contract, just to be prepared. This third and final form is very critical, and most people forget to have it. This releases the location back to the landowner after filming was completed and before you go home for the day to ensure the landowner can't come back to sue you for things which were broken or damaged by your crew members. This is why we suggest you take photos, even on your phone, of every corner of the property you'll be using before your crew arrive and before filming anything, and another set of photos after you get done before you go home to ensure you have photos to prove you didn't damage anything. Thanks for watching, and subscribe to our channel for new episodes airing every Monday through Thursday. Have a good one.